Hey guys, I'm Books, and I'm a driver for Wet Squad Armor Community. Today I'll be delivering the first of our new series called Armor Briefs. In these videos we'll talk about the history and stats of the vehicles found in Squad. Most of these vehicles you'll see featured in our gameplay videos. We thought it would be nice to provide more information about what we play and the information those in our community keep on hand. Hopefully you'll learn something and then be able to take this information into games to improve your vehicle gameplay. In this first episode, I'll be giving you a briefing on the T-72 Russian main battle tank. Specifically, the T-72 B-3 variant, which you'll find yourself playing on the Russian ground forces faction in squad. In this video, I'll briefly cover the history of the T-72 and the modifications that were made to become the B-3 variant. I will also cover the important in-game statistics such as the reload time, the turret reverse rate, the munitions you have and more. So to start, I would like to go into a little bit of the history of the T-72. Not a lot of the history, so you can stick around. If you want to get to the stats, they will come soon. Ultimately, knowing its history isn't imperative to gameplay, but it might give you an insight as to how the current model came about and why it is able to pose a threat to the other in-game MBTs. In 1968, the T-72 started out its life under the prototype designation 1 Object 172, with Object being the typical prefix for Russian military prototypes. It had a 125mm gun and a weak World War II 780 horsepower engine. The first batch, designated Object 172M, was slightly modified and then accepted into service in 1973 with the name of T-72. The first notable changes that were made to the T-72 came with the 1979 T-72A variant. With this, they added a laser rangefinder, composite front and turret armour, and the positions for adding future modifications such as reactive armour, smoke grenade launches, and a few more things. Major changes came with the 1985 T-72B model. These included a new 125mm smoothbolt gun, stabiliser, new sights, extra armour and a fat 840 horsepower engine. Oh, and Russians being Russians, they decided to stock the ammo rack with a severe ATGM. Conveniently, this 125mm laser guided rocket could be fired through the tank's main gun, so no need to put an extra launcher on the top. Some more changes came with the 2011 B3 variant of the T-72, including a new gunner sight and an improved autoloader. But the 2016 B3, also called B3M, slash B4, brings the modifications we see in squad today, such as the use of the reflex anti-tank guided missile in place of the sphere, the relict explosive reactive armor system, or just ERA, and an even chonkier 1130 horsepower engine. Now in this next section, I'm going to talk about the stats that really matter to us in game. Let us look at the different seats and roles you can take in the T-72 and what surprises they hold. First, the driving role. Often it's the last choice for someone taking out vehicles. You don't get to go blasting with any big boy guns, but you know, this is squad. The aim is not to get the most kills. Arguably, the driver role is as important as a gunner, because without the driver, you ain't going anywhere. As a driver myself, I sympathize with those who think it's boring. It, it certainly can be, but it's an important role nonetheless. It's also a great place to start out as a novice tanky, as you can a lot, uh, learn a lot from an experienced gunner. Plus, you can take your fellow tanker up to a lovely 80 kilometers an hour. However, realistically, you, you will only average around 70 k's. Still though, this is a fun speed for a tank that likes to take its corners sideways. And it's often the fastest tank in the game, if driven by a skilled driver. Although, you must watch your reverse speed, the T-72 is notoriously slow in reverse, which means you will need to be quick in deciding whether to smash that S key now or later. Also, as the driver, you're the one monitoring the health of the tank and its systems, so you really need to be reporting any damage, any loss of tracks, or hits to the ammo rack back to your gunner so they can make the right decisions. You have a health pool of 3000 HP to watch over in the T-72, that's that white bar at the bottom, but this is standard compared to the other MBTs in the game. Next up, gonna roll. As a gunner in the T-72B3, you're given a fine selection of tools to do your blasting with. I'll be going through them all, so let's just start with Armor Piercing, Fin Stabilized, Discarding, Sabo. Oh, that's a mouthful. Uh, we just say AP, or Sabo for short. You have 20 of those, and they work perfectly for all your penetrating needs. 
Next, you have 10 Heat High Explosive Anti-Tank, or just HE for short. These will comfortably level HABs or emplacements and are also good for anti-infantry. Then you have 9 Fragmentation Rounds, or just frags, for those times when you stumble upon a freshly unloaded enemy squad and want to see nothing but red mist. Unique to the T-72, you have two reflex anti-tank guided missiles, which add some spice to your anti-vehicle operations. You see, like I said, they're laser guided, so if you see a moving vehicle or moving heli, use them. And you also have a tame 7.62mm coaxial machine gun with 2,000 rounds of ammo. But let's not forget those two sets of smoke launchers that are uh, on the side of the turret. Uh, these will aid with that slow reverse speed, just in case you need to nope out of there. Some other important stats you'll need to know as a gunner in the T-72 is that you have the second slowest reload of any MBT. Sadly, the autoloader only allows you to reload in 8.3 seconds, which is years compared to the Abrams 6 second reload. This is an important fact to know, as if you come up against anything other than the T-62, you'll need to be the one who shoots first and the one who hits first, otherwise your opponent may be able to get off up to 4 rounds by the time you've shot your third. Next, turret rotation. You have a relatively slow turret rotation speed of 12 seconds. This is days compared to the challenge of 7 seconds. It's important to bear in mind, especially when pushing enemy MBTs, as you're likely to be able to struggle tracking them. So that is, if you're driving past them, if they're moving, you're going to have a hard time following them. Whereas if you're up against something like a challenger, they're going to be following you like you're a fly. If you're thinking about going for high kill games, then it should be noted that the T-72 sights are very effective at medium to long range, where there is often no need to think about ranging, you simply just have to point and shoot at the target without having to think more, without having to you know, press a button and scroll like in the Leopard, or without using the laser range finder and then aiming up to counter that. That's not the same for long, long range, of course you need to do that at long range, but that's medium range we're talking about here. Also, the Coaxial Machine Gun has a high bullet velocity which complements the sights for taking out infantry at these medium to long ranges we were just talking about. However, in close combat and urban scenarios, it is a nightmare. The sights are too zoomed in, meaning that you have very poor peripheral vision, and so there's always going to be that pesky AT that's going to get his shot off without you being able to see where he came from or where he is. Now, the third and final role is the Commander Seat. Since there's an autoloader in the T-72, you can only cram three Russian crewmates into this at any one time. There's no extra machine gun on the top, there's no open top or RDWS gunner, loader gunner that is. But as a commander, you have a zesty 12.7mm machine gun at your disposal. Although you're only given two 150 round ammo boxes. Being that you have ammo boxes, it means you're going to have to reload at some point. So for a little bit of time, your gun's going to be down. This is also something to be cautious of as, you know, it only takes a, 12, a single 12.7mm round to, to kill the enemy at the receiving end, so you just need to calm your trigger finger, hold off with a spray and paint mentality that so often haunts us, and save your ammo because you never know when some pesky engin engineer or sapper is going to climb up on top of you, try to send you to the Shadow Realm. The commander role, it should be said, is very useful in close quarters, unlike the gunner. The sight on the commander roll is beautiful for both short and medium ranges and provides excellent peripheral vision. Right, okay, so let's just summarise this info dump into some meaningful conclusions. These will become a lot clearer as we upload more armour briefs and you have more uh, vehicles to compare that to. But anyway, let's start with the overall stats of the tank that we talked about. We can comfortably say that the T-72 isn't the best tank in any one particular area. It's fast, yes, but only if you stick to roads. Its reload is the second slowest in the game, and its turret traverse is also very slow, so no bonus points, no great pushing ability there. Uh, the T-72 also has weak hull armour, and so expect to be penned and punished quite easily if you have overexposed yourself. With all that being said, however, the T-72 does provide some advantages. The vehicle has a small height and a very low profile turret. This means you can easily get down into a hull down position, and when you're in hull down, your turret is a small and hard to hit target. Add this to the fact that the T-72 has some of the best turret armour in the game, then you have yourself a tank that is lethal given the right conditions. Another point to mention is that the T-72, with its variety of ammo choices, is a great multitasker. It also excels in medium range anti-infantry with the addition of the frag rounds helping you paint the battlefield red. 
all this combines means that we have a tank that is weak in some areas um, and not strong in any one particular area but with a skilled crew could be an excellent tool to help your team win and well that concludes the video thank you for watching leave a like and subscribe to catch more of these episodes along with all our other content please do leave a comment with what you thought about this new series and also let us know if there are any vehicles you want to see next thanks again out